Hello, Mia. I'm so, so excited to have you here and that you'll be commenting and talking about what is so important about the mouth, mouth health, oral health, um, dental health, and how it relates to bone health and how the osteoporosis drugs may impact bone health, osteonecrosis. So I'm going to ask you if you can introduce yourself and tell my audience who you are. I will say how delightful you are, but tell us who you are and how you came to the mouth. Hello, Irma. Uh, thank you for uh, making this possible. I feel really honored and uh, I must say comfortable. Uh, so um, I'm a, um, a long living plant with a few careers in my uh, luggage. So my first half of life was uh, pediatric dentistry and preventive dentistry, uh, teaching and working and uh, mentoring in university uh, settings for almost 20 years from early 90s to uh, mid 2000. When I've decided to uh, settle in Canada to uh, live with my family in Montreal. And uh, over here, I reached out for the preventive part of the dentistry, which is my real uh, um, passion. And it's my life philosophy. So I became a dental hygienist and I'm very active in um, community work, in social responsibility sharing, in involving dental hygienists, in uh, broad discussion about prevention, about giving power to patients, teach them how to handle and know about their health to help themselves. So a this is what I'm doing these days. And how long have you been doing all the work that you've been mentioning? How long has that been? Oh, well, I've started my dental studies in 1985. Mm -hmm. My first work uh, on a master thesis started in 1991. And uh, eventually I came to Canada in 2008. So uh, I hold the permit for dental hygiene practice in Quebec in Canada since 2016. Since uh, 2022, I also have a, a license for independent dental hygiene practice. And that allows me to go places. I have my mobile clinic and to visit my patients who are predominantly with the special needs in their homes and the facilities they are living. In a broader sense, this is how the mouth looks like. And uh, there are many tenants inside. They all live in a, a sort of a balance of equilibrium. And they're all living on our tissues and in our tissues. So we'll see how it affects the entire health, the general health. Why I say that the mouth is a mini planet because it's an ecosystem. It can uh, um, be seen independently, but as a total a global environment. And also it's very important to know that it affects the entire body and also everything that happens in the rest of our organism is affecting the situation in the mouth. This is the only cavity that we have, which is open to the world almost all the time when we talk. <laughs> and it has solid organs, which are also exposed to the outer uh, uh, space, which is unique example. Our bones are hidden, our teeth are out. We have many types of soft tissues. It's not just one. So we can easily compare and relate to everything that happens in the body when we see different changes on our different soft tissues in the mouth. I like to say that the mouth always tells the truth. Uh, the first symptoms, which we often don't feel, we can only see or our hygienist can see or our dentist can see, they're symptomless. So the mouth is the only cavity where the pain and discomfort usually come at the very end of uh, the development of something that's not right.
I'm trying to tell you how many soft tissues we have. So we have something that's half, half like lips. It's half skin, half uh, uh, mucosa or soft tissues. We have our tongue, which is a muscle covered with a special carpet that has a lot of taste buds, uh, save our lives and uh, also gives us a lot of ple pleasure. Under the tongue, we have very thin mucosa over blood vessels and over the muscles, which are the floor of the mouth. So uh, this is also very indicative for us. We can see many changes over there. Palate, palate is the soft tissue directly attached to the bone. And it's very sensitive. It's, a, it's like a little tent just over the bone of the upper jaw. And we have cheeks. Cheeks are with soft, thin mucosa over muscles that we use to eat. Finally, we have gums. Gums are different. Gums uh, um, also have different elements. I will not detail now. The thing is that they're attached to the tooth. And that attachment is our precious, precious gift. If that attachment is lost, we're gonna have receding gums, we're gonna have introduction into periodontal disease and bacteria will follow that highway all the way down next to the tooth and will produce different harmful effects. Harmful so, effects harmful effect within the body, man? Pardon? Harmful effects within the body? Well, we first, it's going to be local around the teeth. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do have proof that in a periodontal uh, disease, which means loss of the support uh, tissues around the tooth, the bone, alveolar bone and the gums, we do have that kind of infection where bacteria are going through the bloodstream and some of them have very uh, um, recognized affinity for, we call it lean, smooth muscle, like heart muscle, like muscles in arteria. So in, in the walls of uh, arterial blood vessels and also some affinity for joints, for distant joints. So Mia, how, how do people get in touch with you? So, Thank you for asking how uh, how people can best uh, contact me. I think the email is uh, the best mean because I'm really eager reader. I answer all my emails and it's in the bottom of this page. Uh, 